Welcome to Runegistics, the series where we walk through everything you need to know to complete an OSRS task or goal as efficiently as possible. Today's walkthrough is for Dream Mentor. This guide applies to no restriction accounts as well as Iron Man accounts. Feel free to follow the inventory tracker, pause points, and pre fry indicators at your leisure. Before beginning this quest, you'll need to have previously completed the quests Death Plateau, Troll Stronghold, Druidic Ritual, Edgar's Ruse, Jungle Potion, Shiloh Village, Rune Mysteries, Lost City, The Fremenic Trials, and Lunar Diplomacy. Completion of this quest will require a minimum of 85 combat. Not strength, not attack, combat. To complete this quest, you'll need the following tradable items. You should take the time to gather these materials prior to beginning this quest. As this guide is Iron Man friendly, we will cover a quick path to gather all of the required items in the next section. Here's a quick path to take to gather all necessary items to complete this quest. Near the beginning of the quest, you'll need to heal Sirisus by giving him three different foods sequentially. We'll cover this more later, but for now, the best way to prep for this is to gather sacks of vegetables, specifically a sack of cabbages, onions, and potatoes. This will only require you to use three inventory spaces to hold all the food you need versus 20. For this reason, we'll start at Vanessa's farming shop in Catherby with about 100 to 500 GP, however much you can bring really. Buy three empty sacks from the shop. From here, run to Relica and into the onion patch in the southeast corner. Pick 10 onions and put them into one of the empty sacks using the fill option on the sack. From here, run to Sigmund's General Store near the docks. Buy 10 potatoes and 10 cabbages, filling the two remaining empty sacks you have to complete gathering all the food you need to heal Cirrhosis. While there, also buy a hammer, a tinder box, and a pestle and mortar. The only other remaining items you need to gather are an astral rune and gout weed. Assuming you have a seal of passage in your inventory when you travel to the Looter Isle for this quest, you can stop by Baba Yaga's magic shop and buy all the astral runes you need. For the gout weed, you'll need to teleport to Trollheim. If you are doing this quest, you should have this teleport unlocked. Once there, head west down the mountain and into the stronghold. Head south and down the staircase to the lower level. On this level, you will need to avoid the patrolling trolls to get the gout weed. The best way to do this is to move at certain points during the trolls' paths. This can be a bit tricky. Make sure your run is toggled on. Here is a detailed step-by-step -step method. Click on the first safe spot space surrounded by the boxes here. When the closest troll is located here. Here is the next safe spot. You will need to click it when these two trolls are in these exact locations. At this point, you need to click on the crate of Goutweed. This is the troll you need to avoid, and you should click the crate when he is here. After this, you will be knocked out and you can exit the stronghold. Assuming you gather the astral runes in the Lunar Isle, you now have all the items necessary to complete this quest. As far as helpful items for this quest that aren't required, good food such as sharks, karambwans, monkfish are only thing you're really going to need. The following teleports and spells are helpful to have to make completion of this quest much faster. Being able to cast the spell NPC Contact with the Lunar Spellbook open. This requires two air runes, one astral rune, and one cosmic rune to cast, and you're probably going to cast it multiple times. Certain items are needed for certain sections of Dream Mentor, so you will not need all of these items in your inventory at once. Feel free to follow the inventory tracker at the bottom of the screen, which will consistently update as the quest progresses. There are four boss-style NPCs you will need to kill for this quest, and you will need to fight them back to back without using prayer. Two of the last three fights are safe spottable, and the very last one doesn't have much incoming damage, so the first one is really the only major challenge. We will cover all these fights during the walkthrough. The NPCs are the Inadequacy level 343, the Everlasting level 223, the Untouchable level 274, and the Elusive level 108. The fights in the Dream World are the major factor in determining the optimal gear setup for this quest. All bosses have a weak magic defense, so it is recommended to bring a magic setup. Even using a melee defense setup and attacking with magic will still be effective considering the NPC's low magic defense. Additionally, it is helpful to start this quest with the Lunar Spellbook activated, which you will switch later if you plan on using magic for the fight 
bike anyway. In this video, the walkthrough is completed using Graceful Gear just to test the capability with absolutely no buffs or no extra benefits from equipment. Dream Mentor can be broken up into four separate sections. Accepting the quest and helping heal Cerasus, making the Dream Potion, fighting the NPCs in the Dream World, and turning in the quest. Here is the optimal starting inventory for this quest, as well as the nice to haves, which will remain on screen and continuously update. A few notes to add. For the runes, what's absolutely necessary are at least a few astral runes, cosmic runes, and air runes. One astral rune is needed to make the dream potion, and the others are to make the quest move much, much faster, since you can use the NPC contact spell to talk to Cirrusis remotely instead of having to continuously go into the cave to talk to him. Start this quest by traveling to Lunar Isle. You can do so by traveling to Relica and taking the boat to Lunar Isle. I'd recommend in once on the island you switch your spellbook to lunar spellbook if you don't have it activated already by traveling to the lunar altar on the south part of the island and praying at it from the lunar island altar travel north and east until you reach the entrance to the mine into the mine and crawl through the passageway to find a fallen man inspect him to open up a unique status menu stop point if you are using the sacks of vegetables gathered before starting this quest empty the sacks before continuing because if you feed Cirrus one of the sacks of food versus a single piece he will take the whole whole sack and it will only count as one piece of food that you have fed him. At this point, you'll need to increase Cirrus' health and spirit status by feeding him the food you gathered prior to starting, as well as encouraging him through dialogue. In order to increase his health, you'll need to feed him three unique pieces of food in sequence. Food A, then B, then C. He will always reject your food if you offer him either of the last two pieces you gave him. So it helps to keep track of this. Keep feeding Cirrus until your chat box says he doesn't need any more food. As a side note, if you want to, you can use one type of food if you log out and in in between each piece of food you give him, but this increases the amount of time it takes to complete the quest. Once he doesn't need any more food, you can now focus on his spirit. Increase Cirrus' spirit is done by talking to him. Do this by continuously talking to him and selecting the most positive dialogue option available. Here's a list of correct choices to make it easier. You'll end up alternate talking to and feeding Cirrus until his health and spirit are at 70 and 72% respectively. Once he stands up and his health and spirit are high enough, you can focus on getting his armament. Talk to him one more time and head back to Lunar Island Bank. You can exit the cave or use the Lunar Island Home Teleport if you are in a Lunar Spellbook and the cooldown is available. Once at the bank, speak to the banker on the far right, Bird's Eye Jack. Tell him you want to access Cirrus's bank account. At this point in time, you will need to select the correct gear setup for Cirrus before you continue. This is a guess and check task, and it can take a little bit of time. Utilizing the spell NPC Contact makes this go by much, much faster. Here's an easy way to help with this part. Start by looking at your melee ranged and magic skills. Based on whichever skill is the highest, select the following option. If the average of your attack, strength, and defense levels are higher than both range and magic, choose the Dragon Medhelm, Aram Drogue Top and Skirt, Ranger Boots, and the Abyssal Whip. If your range level is higher than both your magic and the average of your attack, strength, and defense, choose the Split Bark Helm, Carol's Leather Top, Torax Plate Legs, Adamant Boots, and a Magic Short Bow. If your magic level is higher than both your range and the average of your attack, strength, and defense levels, choose the Robin Hood Hat, Dragon Chain Body, Black Dehyde Chaps, Infinity Boots, and Ancient Staff. After you select all of the items based on the best option for you, use either NPC Contact to talk to Cirrusis directly to see if you were correct, or head back to him within the mine and check. He will tell you which pieces are correct and which pieces are not. You'll need to continue switching out the incorrect pieces with other options in that slot until the entire set is correct. Note, this is why NPC Contact is extremely useful here. Once complete, you can move on. Continue this quest by heading back to Cirrus and getting his health and spirit bar all the way up to 100% using the same method you did previously. Once all of his status bars are at 100%, he will tell you he's afraid of combat, and you will both go to the Waneromancer near the Lunar Altar. Exit the mine and head south to the Lunar Altar, speaking to the Waneromancer once you're there. Once you talk to her, Cirrus will appear after exhausting the dialogue, and she will give you a dream vial to make a dream potion. To make the potion, do these steps. 1. Fill the dream vial with water. 2. Use the gout weed on the vial. Three, use a hammer on an astral rune and a pestle and mortar on the result and add this to the potion. At this point, you should have the completed dream potion and can move on to the combat phase of this quest. Stop point and incoming fight. Prayer is not allowed during these fights and the only way to leave the combat area is to use the lectern located within the dream world. You cannot use teleport spells or items. If you do leave the combat area, once you re-enter, you will need to start the entire combat phase over. Additionally, we will assume that you are using magic to complete this quest 
as it is highly recommended due to the very low magic defense of the bosses. Because of this, make sure you change your spellbook to whatever offensive spell set you want to use. If you want it to be the normal spellbook, go back to Lunar Altar and pray. With that being said, it is advised to have the following inventory before starting. Your Seal of Passage, the Dream Potion, your Tinderbox, Combat Spell Runes, whichever ones you want to use if you're using magic, and as good of food as you can possibly bring. In order to test the capability of completing these fights, I fought using basic magic spells and a staff with full graceful on, while eating Karambwans. A last and very important note, the boss Boss fights in the dream world are fought in an instanced unsafe location. If you die, unsaved items will be placed at a gravestone by the dream hall. If you are a hardcore Iron Man, you will lose your hardcore status. As stated before, the fights are completed in sequence with no break in between. Throughout all four encounters, Cirrus fights with you. He has a confidence bar that slowly grows. You don't need to do anything specific with him. He will either provide helpful damage or cast vengeance other on you during the fight. Realistically, the challenge of the sequence is only defeating the first boss, a level 343 monster called the Inadequacy. Regardless of your combat level, expect to burn through almost all of your food just killing this one mob. Once you have your inventory prepped, head over to the largest western building on the Lunar Isle, the Dream Hall. In the middle of the building is a brazier. Light it with your tinder box and speak to Cirrus to enter the dream state. As stated before, the first fight is unquestionably the hardest. Cast your selected magic spell on the boss at all times. Small NPCs called a doubt will spawn throughout the fight. Ignore these and focus the inadequacy down, as they will disappear once it's killed. Turning off auto retaliation while fighting this boss is a good idea to avoid the annoyance of auto targeting the ads. This is basically just a DPS race. Eat whenever necessary and burn the boss as quickly as possible. Once the inadequacy dies, the second boss will spawn, a level 223 NPC called the Everlasting. You should immediately run and stand beside the lectern as this is a safe spot. If you position yourself here, you can free cast on the second and third boss without fear of being damaged. Safe spot, the Everlasting down and third boss will spawn, a level 274 NPC called the Untouchable. Safe spot, the Untouchable down and the final boss will appear a level 108 NPC called the Elusive. This is a unique fight that is very similar to the giant mole boss fight. The Elusive will continuously disappear and reappear, and you will need to track it down and slowly burn it down. The boss will rarely attack you, and keep teleporting away. Keep tracking him down, and eventually kill the Elusive. Once you've finished off the Elusive, use the Lectern to exit the Dream World and travel back to the Wanira Mancer at the Lunar Altar. Talk to her to complete the quest.